You all know who this girl is? Look at this child. Is this the face of a demon? Or is this the look of a skeptic who's not buying your bullshit? <laughs> the problem is, it's the same glare either way. And that's why we're lumped in together. This is the way we look when we realize we're being lied to. When you realize that all of the fables in the Bible began as began in the hearts of superstitious primitives who just made it up. It's man-made mythology and there is no truth in it. There's no heaven, no hell, no Eden either, and there is no devil. He was invented by Persians, adapted by Jews, and embellished by Christians. He was never the serpent, nor a fallen angel, and he can't steal your soul because we don't have souls. Exorcism isn't real because demons aren't real because magic isn't real we are not cursed we are not fallen we have arisen and we don't need salvation because God literally doesn't give a damn what happens after you die because then neither of you exist there is no God damn devil because there is no God damn you just die, and that's it. You're not immortal. You're not eternal. And to believe otherwise is to diminish everything that you really have. Life is precious because it is short, and there's nothing after it. There's no destiny, and there's no purpose beyond what you give it yourself. If you want your life to mean something, try making someone else's life meaningful. Be <laughs> Thank you. Because regardless, whatever else you believe, history will be our judge. And stop waiting and wondering about some posthumous promise or divine damnation and learn to live and love life. The one thing that the Bible isn't that some people seem to think it is. It's not a biology textbook. It's not an astronomy textbook. The first, the first chapter of Genesis, the first couple of chapters of Genesis are uh, the 6th century BC version of how the world might have started. We've improved on that since. I don't believe that those are God's words. Those are the words of men trying to make the most sense that they could out of out of the information they had at the time. You don't buy Adam and Eve either. No, I don't buy Adam and Eve either. Uh, but uh, it's undoubtedly a legend which has some significance, but it's not historical. What about the life of Christ? Well, Jesus. Well, this of course is in historic times. It's at the time when the, when the uh, Roman Empire was at its height. And the thing about it is that all the only information we have about the life of of Jesus is in the Gospels, in the New Testament Gospels. There's no reference to him in any literature outside. There's one dubious paragraph in the histories of Josephus, which may have is that been... right? There's no reference to Jesus other than Matthew, Mark, Luke, John? And, of course, in, in, in the rest of the Bible, the, 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 epistle, yeah, right. the epistles of Paul, Acts to the right, Apostles. Right, right. But outside the sacred writings, absolutely no mention. No historian who was not... Who was who not... Who, who is not a Christian, let's yeah. put it that way. Not in Bethlehem, no one left any writings of any kind. None, none. This doesn't mean that he didn't exist. The chances are he did. There were many people at the time who were, what should we say, messianic, mm -hmm. uh, who were believed to be messiahs by one group or another. And uh, Jesus survived in the, as a messiah. Incredible impact for someone who got such little notice at the time from historians, right? Well, that's true, but uh, that's, the way, that's the way sometimes it works out. Uh, when, when Mohammed also received little notice outside of Arabia, and uh, I dare say many founders of great religions were dismissed by people of the time, except those who believed in them as just one more kook. Uh, the God of the Gaps argument has always been used uh, uh, to provide a place for God. The idea is that if uh, science can't explain something, then maybe we need to reintroduce God. That's been historically the reason why people even talked about God. God was always an explanation for the things they didn't understand. Now, I don't claim that we understand everything, 
but we can, we can give a plausible explanation for every question of this sort. Rather than the gaps increasing, as he was, was urging, I, I claim that the gaps have pretty much disappeared. Not that, again, we can explain everything, but we have a plausible explanation. And that's why I wanted to give some detail into that, that scenario for the natural origin of the universe. Also to give you some reason, uh, idea of, of how, how uh, the laws of nature could, could come about. So I think that uh, the, the fact that uh, God is not needed, we have, an, we have a natural explanation for the universe for everything that we know we, in, in no place do we have to put put God into the picture uh, so there's absolutely no reason to even introduce the concept of God it's a meaningless concept as though it has not only no evidence there's no basis for it and the universe looks just like it should look if there is no God someone's arguing with me that the earth is 5,000 years old <laughs> yes I'm smiling yeah of course I'm smiling you know the 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 fundamentalist view uh, of the, uh, you know, the creation of the Earth is rather like an episode of the Flintstones. Mm -hmm. So I, I, have, I have to laugh at those sort of how things. Does your, how does your atheism, which you're passionate about, mm -hmm. how does that play with your American audience, given that so many people in America are God-fearing people uh, and probably take exception to it? Um, well, but they shouldn't. We talked about this last time. Why, why should they take offence that I don't believe in their God or any other God? And I'd say to them, you know, tell me the reasons why you don't believe in all the other gods, and that's the reason I don't believe in yours. And I, I've got nothing against people believing in God at all, you know. Um, uh, in, in fact, if, if it, you know, did make you a kinder person, if you only did good things in his name, mm -hmm. then great, you know, but there's the rub. Uh, it's when... Uh, I see some of these religious fundamentalists saying that um, they've told their five-year-old children that if they turn out gay, they will burn in hell. Mm. That, to me, is child abuse. That's nothing to do with religion or spirituality. That's child abuse. So that's why I'm passionate when it comes to that. What do you think that. of the... No, no, it, it, no, America's fantastic. It is the land of opportunity. And, um, uh, uh, and um, th there's, there's, you know, bits of both cultures that I, I love and hate. And... Um, uh, uh, and the wonderful thing about being between uh, England and America, they are both land of freedom, and criticise them all you want, but know that you're in a place that allows you to criticise it. Mm. And, that's, and that's lucky, you know, and, and that's great, and that should be cherished. And freedom of speech for me is, is one of the most important things that, that you know, discovered. Mm. Uh, and uh, I'll fight for the right of it. And, and even though I don't believe in God, and I don't believe, you know, unlike most religions, I treat all religions the same. Mm. I, I think they're all um, r wrong, not morally wrong, but I don't think there, there is or could be a, a God. But if someone said, we're banning religion, I'd march to not have it banned, because it's your right to believe what you want, mm. um, and it's your right to be wrong, mm. and I'll fight for that right. Here's just one. There are many examples of the way the Christian God has been defined which cancel themselves out. For example, God is defined as a being with free will who knows everything. He knows the future. God not only knows the past, and I'm assuming this is the kind of definition that you hold. You'll correct me if I'm wrong, because you haven't told us yet. But God not only knows the past and the present, but he also knows the future, which means he also knows his own future decisions. God knows what he's going to do tomorrow at 12 noon, because he's God. He knows everything. But if you know what's going to happen in the future, that, that puts some limits on your power, doesn't it? How can you be omnipotent and unable to change what's going to happen between now and then? And if you do change it, then you weren't omniscient. Something's got to give. You can't be omniscient and have free will at the same time. To have free will, whatever that means with humans, and maybe we do or don't, that's a different debate. But certainly if God has free will, it's a full libertarian free will, and he can do whatever he wants because he's God, right? If God has free will then he can't know the future. If you know the future, you can't have free will because the future is fixed. There's no period of indeterminacy between now and then where you could change your mind. I might decide I'm going to have coffee tonight after we go out, but I could change my mind in the meantime. I have the freedom to make that choice. So if God is defined as a being with free will who is omniscient, who knows the future, then that God is a married bachelor, and that God not only does not exist, that God cannot exist. And there are dozens of incompatible properties between God that show that by definition, 
Mathematically, logically, the God you believe in cannot exist. Also, in order for any hypothesis to be veridical, meaning it can be true or false, it has to be falsifiable. There have to be things you can say about your hypothesis which, if true, would make it false. If, if we found a black polar bear, the statement, all polar bears are white, would be falsified, right? We haven't yet, which strengthens the hypothesis. So I would ask you, what kind of statements could be made which, if true, would prove theism false? If you can't do that, you don't even have, not only do you not have a coherent definition, you don't even have a coherent hypothesis of this being that you are arguing for. The second absence, and this is probably the biggest one, the second absence is the absence of evidence for a God. If there were evidence for a God, we would have seen it tonight. It would have been on the table. Jerry would have said, here's the evidence for a God, not evidence against evolution. That's just a gap. Um, my question is for uh, Mr. Gillette. Um, I liked how you framed the definition of atheist. I had never thought about that, and it gave, it's giving me something to think about. Thank and you. I also appreciated hearing your explanation about why you oppose like nativity scenes on public property. Could you also comment about what you think about the Ten Commandments being displayed on public property and how that... It, it's, it's the same thing. You know, well, w one of the ways uh, Glenn and I get to know each other more was him asking me to write an Atheist Ten Commandments. And there is a lot of arguments, and very reasonable ones, that morality uh, is more important than religion. When you say the sentence, God is good, you have automatically said that there is a morality outside of God. And that's a morality that we all share. And I think that trying to put that in a Judeo-Christian context in a courthouse does leave people out. Uh, it's what all I want is for more people to be included in more things. And that courthouse should really belong to everybody. So let's put as few things in that are exclusive and as many things in as are inclusive. It's a conservative issue. This is all painted as though it were a progressive issue, and it's really not. It's a conservative issue. A true conservative believes that the government should be out of as much as possible, and there should be individual freedom. And they're also a true uh, Protestant, especially, or Mormon, believes very strongly in an individual relationship with God, yes. which means you have, in an ideal Protestant world, you have over 300 million different views of God in the United States of America. You can't fit those all in City Hall. So the best thing, as you said very well, we should just keep the state out of it. And you should be able to. Okay, okay, Look at all on, the property you have here. Right, right. Put, put a crash over there. Put a nativity scene over there. Tattoo things all over your body about, right. about God. So it, it, what you're saying is, because... Um... It's only stuff I pay for that I'm bothered by. It's a great disappointment of the last 14 years has been that civil society has failed. That um, we can't do the things to the Islamists that we would do, as I referred to, to the neo-Nazis. You know, we just, we just not, it seems we're not set up for it, or people don't have the guts and the balls for it. They just, you know, they fear being called a name more than anything. And, um, you know, the thing I've always said is, we'll win when an Islamist who is not breaking the law, but is saying horrible and hateful things, is treated in the same way that Nick Griffin is treated. That's when we'll win. You know, because we all recognize he has a right to freedom of speech and so on and so forth, and if he's not breaking the law and it's a legal party and so on. But, you know, we don't invite him to loads of places. The Quakers don't host Nick Griffin, you know, to, to have Q&A sessions. You know, the Methodist Church doesn't celebrate the political thought of Nick Griffin. You know, the, the Anglican Church doesn't have hymn sheets that promote things that Nick Griffin thinks. Of course not. We know what to do with those types of fascists. But societally, we've totally failed to understand, to even recognize, and then to deal with this type of fascism. Uh, it, it's, it's a magnificently terrible failure, and we're reaping the rewards. We have to wake up to this. A Roman Catholic church, which preaches that women are vessels of temptation, which insists on celibacy, that makes sex a matter of guilt and shame, uh, that is composed of an all-male priesthood, uh, the, the whole practice of which is based 
on a sexual repression. What do you think is going to happen to the children in the care of those people? Don't act surprised. They don't act surprised. They knew what was going on all the time. And they covered up for it. Where is cardinal law, may I ask you? Former prince of the church in these United States. Why is he in Boston Lair, do you want to know this? Why is he not in the top? Because he's in the Vatican. Because he's fled the jurisdiction and been given a sinecure at the Church of Santa Maria Maggiore in Rome and voted in the conclave to, to produce the next pope, the, 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 the holder of the keys of Peter, the vicar of Christ on earth. This man who ran a racket of child abuse, why do we call it abuse? Of the rape and torture of children for generations, decades, and across a wide swath of the country. And it's not because, it's not in spite of his religion, it's because of it. And I think uh, it's evasive to pretend otherwise. A religion's undermined respect for the only way of acquiring reliable information about the nature of the world. Religions encourage the pursuit of understanding by the contemplation of navels and the achievement of comprehension by adopting a variety of ways of stemming the flow of blood to the brain. They encourage scavenging hints about the nature of reality by the close analysis of those ancient, politically edited compilations of folk tales referred to as sacred texts. If you favour self-deception, then vote against the motion. If you consider that society is enhanced by honesty and by unbiased perception of the search for truth, then vote for the motion. Thirdly, religions undermine respect for evidence. Religions harm societies by disfavouring evidence in favour in favor of faith, preferring mass hysteria, superstition, priestly authority, and the propagation of beliefs by cultural conditioning over controlled, careful, circumspect, public, unbiased inspection. If you consider that introspection and submission to authority mark the path to understanding, then vote against the motion. If instead you consider that truth is not arrived at by fanning the flames of a crowd's opinion, but by circumspect public scrutiny, then vote for the motion. Point of information? Take it. Within Islam, there is a procedure to alter the text according to modern society, which relies on logical analogies that are drawn from the real world and a logical process that is followed to reach the conclusion. <coughs> How then does it block logical interpretations of the world around us? Thank you. All religions pride themselves on developing analogies, normally after the truth has been discovered by scientists. <laughs> I can't agree to the claims by atheists that I'm one of that community. I don't have the time, energy, interest of conducting myself that way. I'm perfectly happy going to see the rock opera Jesus Christ Superstar. I have Handel's Messiah on my iPhone, along with Bach's B minor mass and some of my favorite bits of music. This is what I do, and I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm perfectly fine with having religious people who live all around me. I, I'm not trying to convert people. I don't care. We're in a religiously pluralistic society, most of what accounts for the immigration waves into this nation were people fleeing religious persecution in their hometown. And no one will deny the richness of this country as a product of the immigration that unfolded. I'm okay with that. Just keep it out of the science.